Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. Be seated in his presence just for a moment. We've got to understand what that, I'm going to coin a phrase, super principality, queen of heaven, what that principality does, how it damages families and, cha and churches, etc. Because we cannot be unaware of the schemes of Satan and there are a lot of things that we are unaware of still that is in our, not just our generational line, but behaviors that we have allowed that are part of what that principality wants. So that was already mentioned earlier. So um, I, w I want you to know why we continue at this season to finish because it's not finished. Um, there are two areas, Queen of Heaven and Jezebel, because they both go together. And um, I'm not prepared to back off of exposing both, because in my experience, those are not the only two, but mainly when they, are, they work together the, the family, the families, the marriages, the churches, the businesses are affected. As you become more familiar with what the Queen of Heaven is about, you will understand the deception that many have been under. And also, to, um, I want to touch now on Queen of Heaven, uh, um, um, Jezebel, because we are never, ever finished. I can never finish. And I want to tell you all that the message on Sunday, the tables are turning. The tables have turned. I just want to let the church know the tables have turned. And there are things that have been keeping the church back. And there are other churches that will testify. But I'm not here to speak on their behalf. And God will judge some of us pastors if we continue to allow it. So the only way to expose is to teach people to look for these things. And if they still don't recognize it, we will then bring it to their attention. But the first thing is, teach on it. Okay, so I know you've heard Jezebel before. Don't have a tire because actually we are looking for some big entity looping down. The way we enable, not just a spirit, it's a principality and it also takes hold of parts of people's soul. If you are only getting deliverance and your soul is not being healed, the demons come back, one. And two, you are not walking in full wholeness because your soul, your mind, will, and emotions could have been fragmented, could have been defiled by the enemy, even from birth. Depending on what has happened, parts of your soul might still need to be restored. And so if that's not, God said he heals, he, he heals the brokenhearted. I'm not teaching a topic now. You'll get all these biblical scripture to talk about. The soul must not be left out. So don't just focus on demons. Because sometimes it's a part of a person's soul that needs healing when you're busy casting the demon out. There's no demon to cast out. And so you want God to heal those deep and hidden areas in you. And those are areas that are usually very hidden. However, I want you to remember um, for the homes and for the businesses and the marriages that Jezebel is an evil ancient spirit that has been causing havoc in families and marriages, businesses and churches and individuals for thousands of years. She also comes with divination, as does the 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 queen of heaven. It's a spirit that is undaunted in securing her stronghold in the souls of men and women everywhere. You hear me saying souls. So I want you to know while there is, there is a demonic spirit associated with Jezebel, the soul, which is, we have, this is our soul, right? Mind, will, and emotions. So there can be a vice grip in your soul or part of your soul. Jezebel has taken over. This is why we tell people, look at the characteristic traits. 
If you want to know if perhaps Jezebel is affecting you, you need to see the fruit in your life. Don't be flippant with these kind of statements that I hear people using, strong men, Leviathan, Jezebel, you know, is this one affecting me? Listen to me, y'all. Y'all know not what you all talk about. Because you don't want to mess with those strong men, nor do you want any part of it. And if Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for us, you should not be one more day affected by some of these entities that also interfere with your soul. You should be running for help. Because as I said earlier, for those who came a little later, what I really am encouraged by, and I will keep saying it to give you all hope, some of the most extreme cases abroad that I minister to, because I don't just minister to this church, they come out of the deepest levels of Satanism. And they are desperate for help. And everything you tell them to do, because of the desperation, they do. You say, go to the word, Holy Spirit, this is the direction we're going in. You don't get a little chatter, chatter, back talk, little Twitter, Twitter, because it's life or death. If they don't come out, they're dead. We have no clue that level of bondage. Thank God. But we've made some of our bondage respectable. That they're dragging on and on and on. This is not a rebuke. This is an encouragement. We have no excuse in this church. We can learn. God is showing us every day. But there are some entities, strong men, invaders of our soul that are tolerated. Because we've gotten used to the ways. And I want to say something here. I'm not going to finish what I'm saying. I'm just a quick little snippet because of the time. I want to say this. The same way when the great falling away occurs, we will be thinking is a big thing that, yeah, we know that's a deception. So we're not going to get hit. It's going to be so subtle. That if you have not been in the word of God more than your friendship with people, are you hearing me? If you've not been embedded in the word and taking in the word and understanding how subtle deception is, the great falling away will be real subtle. Please don't think it's something like, for sure, yeah, we're going to recognize. We will recognize if our focus has been Jesus Christ. And nothing else. I make no excuses for that position. Because I see what it takes for people with deep bondage to come out of that bondage. I wish I could tell you all because Jesus Christ died. They come out fast. No, they don't. And some of them, five years later, they're pressing through, but they're coming through. Do you understand? Is that or just die or just be tormented every night of your life. That's the level of bondage. Do you understand? And if you listen to the message a little earlier, I made reference to some that had messaged me because I don't jump into every battle and I don't communicate with everybody by WhatsApp because sometimes they are still connected to the covens. But when you hear them say, we've cut off the handlers, what's the next stage? The handlers are those who enable and encourage and make sure the reinforcement occurs. And I want to say to some of you, while that is a complicated term to some of us handlers, you have handlers, yes, you're handlers. Some of our friends are our handlers. Are you hearing me? Because on a deep level, a handler, when you hear that term used in, in the world of occultism where people are coming out of, that's one that Satan has set up with an agenda to keep that person in bondage. Do you understand? So they could be a teacher, they could be a parent. They could be a friend. And it's only when the person comes for help because life is just, Jesus has come to them and they're like, I want you. And it's like, you can't come out of that so. And, but God has made a way because he is equipping those who desire to be equipped to the body of Christ. I am no great person, but I do desire, which is why I, 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 I cannot just sit still and just... Okay, well, we don't know what to do about that. Just leave that alone. 
Let them bear their cross and follow Jesus. I want you to understand that handlers, their agenda is to keep that person in bondage. And it is done in a very, 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 very well thought out way. And many of them, their, their living depends on their handlers because it's some relative or some, some employer or somebody. So when they give up, when they give up, they lose everything. I'm, I'm just helping you to open your eyes so that you understand that while maybe you think this doesn't apply to you, let me show you how it infiltrates the church with its respectful bondage. Okay? I've coined that phrase because it's bondage. Must be respectful because it's, yes, no, we in it. And we don't seem to think that we could come out. We don't want to lie on the altar and say, I'm not getting up until. The desperation isn't there. I spoke about that earlier. So I got this message. And those who are listening, because they go and they listen, they can't communicate directly with me, but they know the messages go out. I don't communicate with everybody on WhatsApp. Because you will understand why WhatsApp is a portal. So I'm letting all you know who have your unlimited friends in your WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a portal that witches and warlocks can target you through. And know your business. Don't talk about Facebook. But I'm not going there today. But I want you to know they know that. They know all of that. So when you tell them, don't message me. They don't swell up like some of us swell up. How you, you could tell me, don't message me. Do not message me. I'm blocking you. You can only email me. When I'm satisfied, you've cut off your handlers, then I will get in contact with you. And I will perhaps, if the Holy Spirit tells me to help you, I will help you. That's my normal language. There's a whole different world earlier. But there's the other world that there's desperation. You understand? I mean, there's desperation here. We're trying to tell you just for us to come out of our bubble. And don't stay in the bondage longer than you have to because they have those who don't have a choice. It's not going to happen overnight for them. So I want you to know that a handler is an agent whose purpose in life is to keep that one in bondage. They must never come out. And when they try to come out, they do everything possible to put them back in. I want you to know that when Jesus Christ shows us a way out, of some of the stuff we are in. You know, was this, there's not even the notes I was going and read, yes? I'm done with that today. I'll, I'll come back to Jezebella next time, okay? I just want you to know, for us, we are like, if you are stuck in anything, the first thing you need to do is first ask God to make you desperate. How did you stay stuck? Who's around you? Who do you fraternize with all the time? Who is the one that always wants to find out about your business? Who is the one that perhaps tells you they love you, but, but, but you're not too sure? You can't stay stuck by yourself, y'all. If you are desperate for God, listen to me, y'all. I want you to know that a handler is a person who enables and reinforces and tells you you're doing well when you're real serving Satan. Till you start to say you don't want to serve Satan. Then they start to turn the screws and tell you this is for real. You could always come back into this life. Look at what he did for you. You see us today? That is what some of our friends and family does do to us. We need to take some time and get some things broken off and some healing of our soul done. We have time because we can't say no to the friend. The friend can't leave us alone or the family member. I wouldn't know who. So when I get messages like, I've cut off my handlers. I have no living because they used to pay my bills, but I want to serve Jesus. Since I know that these are people before the mark of the beast, they are ready. Refusing the market beast. Are you understanding? And we sitting here getting it every day. And we can't tell ourselves if you have been in the same condition you have been. Not everybody would say yes to this. But if you have. Fighting the same demons. Struggling the same way. It has to be. That you have handlers around you somehow, somewhere. 
And you need to start now thinking about you, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and who God may have placed in your life, who knows a lot more than you know to help you to come out of your bondage. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because God does not mean for you to stay like that. Don't listen to the liars. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Don't listen to them. We don't have to live this way. There's freedom. There is victory. But if your friend is like that and you, are, you like your friend, you'll stay like that because your friend is like that. And don't talk about if they've been in church for years. Listen to me. You can no longer trust Anybody who tells you anything, even if they're in church for one month or 10 years, get back to the word. It's all about fruit. Jesus is returning for church without spot and wrinkle. There are spots and there are wrinkles and, and God will remove them. But we just don't have anything to compare ourselves to. But here's the comparison. The comparison is the church that God planted in the book of Acts. And that is the way forward. And that's what we said. So even as I would not be able to say what I want to say about the other strong man that has infiltrated the church and our lives, I'm just leaving you with this before I pray for you. I'm leaving you with the fact that I said this last week. I'm saying it again. Look up the word tolerate. Because a lot of us feel that we have to shake down the place, get the whole bottle of oil and swirl it around, put on the loudest worship music, and maybe even scream at the top of our lungs when a simple thing like to, to allow the existence, occurrence, or practice of something that you dislike or disagree to allow it to continue without interference. You don't have to do any big dramatic fast for 40 days to deal with Jezebel. Even the queen of heaven when you understand what are the character traits. You don't have to do all of that. You have to stop tolerating what you might dislike or disagree with, but you're like, it's okay. That's how the person is. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you're not doing anything about it. When we stop tolerating, you will start to see how that strong man cannot wreak havoc in your life in your marriage, in your business. What I will tell you where the church is concerned, you have to stop tolerating, but I assure you, what will happen is that these pastors will not be tolerating. So if the church tolerates, the pastors will say, we've left you all to see for yourself, now we're gonna start to call out people who will not stop what I and my husband and everybody else has been saying, tolerating Jezebel. Do you understand? Don't let nobody make you feel it's some big hocus pocus, big entity have to come out of the sky. It's simple things that you have allowed in your life. And perhaps that's why your marriage is in the condition it's in. In line with what we said Jezebel does. The messages we've preached. It is in your business place. I just spoke to someone and an intercessor had sent a message for that someone concerning a business place. And what I want you to know is the intercessor saw the person's face changing like a chameleon. Jezebel has a chameleon spirit. They change to suit whatever. You can't put your finger so on beha that behavior because as fast as it goes off the deep end, it comes back into the how it's supposed to be, back and forth. But what exposes it is the anointing of God 
and the understanding from the word that God has actually told us not to tolerate. So what we thought was okay, for example, Ananias and Sapphira lied. Jesus did not tolerate the lie. What did he do? Did you see Paul go and say, Oh, thou, thou Sapphira, thou Ananias, we know you lovest God. No. This season in the church, we said it earlier, God is bringing the church back to how the church is called to be. Not to not love people, but to stop letting fear and intimidation stop us from saying enough is enough is enough. So I want to encourage those of you, somebody told you they have a Jezebel in your house or your home or your business. All you need to do is learn to open your mouth. Go back to messages that talks about those traits. There are umpteen that I've preached and there was more I was bringing today. There were some things that I haven't said before. And begin to be like, oh, because you see you know, a tree by its fruit. So you will know. This has to be behavior from either somebody's soul that has been infiltrated with Jezebel. I have I am I'm going through journeys with people with that. Remember, I minister here and I minister on Zoom abroad, right? So your soul, somebody's soul, they could be actually have Jezebel traits and behaviors. There's spirits, there's entities, there's principalities. But the fact is, you'll know. Listen to you all. Please don't complicate the gospel. You think Jesus would have said, don't tolerate, and it's be, I wonder if it's a big mathematical equation I have to do now. What does don't tolerate mean? Don't tolerate means. What are the traits of that particular, a calling it an entity? If it are wrong you, you should be able to identify. It's using a person, tell the person. Because sometimes people don't know, eh? But sometimes they do. You know why they continue to do it? Let me hear who could tell me. Why do they continue over and over to do the same things? And they have been told about it. Because we tolerate. We just leave it. And that's the reason why I said earlier with the Queen of Heaven, don't be afraid if you've been involved with the Catholicism and the, I gave you the other names, that Ishtar and so forth. You will be set free. But you need to know first, is any of this showing itself in me? The, the character traits of, of Queen of Heaven and so. And I, I only gave you all an introduction. You don't know a whole lot about that super strong man, right? But I keep hopping on Jezebel because it's very common and it's in this church. And we are not tolerating it anymore. Do you understand? It will keep you back from your walk. It will want to tell you how to be. You will be so caged, you will know what to do. And God will judge me and my husband. What happened to the church that tolerated it? Let me ask you. Sick bed and the lamp stand. What happened? That's it. So don't read, the, don't read the Bible back to front. Eh? The church is a place for broken people and for those who want Jesus. And they have those who need to start to listen and us who need to now listen to what we are learning and say, is that the problem in my marriage? Is there a friend I've allowed in with certain behaviors and this is what the problem, because it can happen in marriages. It can happen in businesses. It happens in the church. And you will begin to recognize it. Just ask God to open your eyes. So I am not even going to go in any further because I always like to close in worship. But I want to assure you, we cannot be unaware of Satan's schemes. And when I speak to my community abroad, they are coming across the same things. 
is the same global pattern, Queen of Heaven, Jezebel, and there's a whole host of others infiltrating the churches and homes and marriages. And then you have those in deep bondage, but you also have churches like this one. All we want to do is answer Jesus' call. We don't want nothing else. Leave we alone. We want to keep moving forward. We want to say, Jesus, we want to be the church that you planted in the book of Acts, that we have not moved away from the way you've planted that church. Jesus, we just want to answer that call. Time is short, y'all. And those who are not in agreement, don't stay. Because we are moving ahead. There's much coming in the future, y'all. I don't know if you heard. I'm checking it out. But usually when I get these info, the person that sends it checks it. But please allow me to check it. Both Prince Charles, he's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and his daughter-in-law. Since it is a very sad thing, and I'm not here to say anything else except it's sad. But I need to tell y'all, you could shoot me if you want. And I'll give you the proof of it when I have time. When Freemasonry and Satanism is involved in your lifestyle, it doesn't pay. I am not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to warn people. You can't mix stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? But here's what I want to tell you. They're still alive, right? Pray for their salvation. Pray for their salvation. When you see a pattern like that, because I know, because I know some of this stuff that I hear about because I have to help people. And, and, the, and the Satanism and the Freemasonry and all this stuff. I'm not here to tell you if there's Freemasonry in your line again, cancer. I'm telling you though, there are sicknesses that come from that. But God has given us hope, has he not? When you fill out your questionnaire with all of that, I tell you, okay, Olya, we had to start renouncing some things. Some of you doing it by yourself now. You learn to do it by yourself and you just write me back and tell me what's going on because I can't see everybody. But you're getting your breakthrough because you just need to settle down and deal with what's in the generational line, what's in whatever it is you're struggling with. Do you understand? Forget the frolicking for a little bit. Just a little bit. Because God has been good to us. We have respectable bondage in this church. You know what they saying, respectable? It's not bothering nobody. Because it's going from day to day, month to month, year to year. The ones who are really desperate, you wouldn't know, they wouldn't tell you. They don't mess with that. They don't want it. Every week, if you forget to give them something to do, so that they could go before God with it, they message in you. Are we that desperate? Or is it only a time of just friend, friend? Since I have no problem with friends, you know, but I'm letting you know, when the fruit of the, in the tree not growing as it should, you need to stop and take stock. And you need to go into a wilderness and get help. Do you understand? This will not apply to everybody. But you know it's available. It's available. Don't settle for less. So I want to pray for you. And I want to say right now, that God is cleaning off the tables in the church that have been in compromise and bringing her back to her first love. God is calling you to leave those tables and break ties with the spirit of rejection and intimidation that has been oppressing you. God says he's been leading you through a season of leaving the wrong tables that you have been sitting at that have been keeping you back and it's been silencing you and silencing your calling. It's time to leave the proximity of those who have been hurling insults and demonic chatter at you out of jealousy and insecurity. And this goes for your businesses, your personal life, your marriages, the church. You were not created to sit and eat the scraps from under the tables of religion, but to walk away and sit at the table that I have set for you, says the Lord. And in this season, you will leave those places and know your place at my table once again. Psalm 23, 25, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. That's where we are going, saints. But just remember, when Moses led the people, some stayed back. There are those that will stay back. That's not 
your responsibility or mine. We have to sit at the table that God has prepared for us. Nothing must stop it. Do you understand what I'm saying? God says, I am turning the tables of the bad reports where the enemy has been broadcasting. All these fear-mongering lies over your future and current circumstances. Always some negative thing, negative drama. Fear, this, you can't succeed, you're not going to succeed. God says that his propaganda, the propaganda of Satan, has been consumed by the word and the church. Because it was, it's being accepted now by the church. Because people are walking in fear. And many have forgotten what the good news of Jesus Christ is. And so we get hold of God's promises now. And forget about the fear mongering. God says he's going to expose and dismantle the lies of Satan. Remind his church what the good news sounds like. He's turning over the tables of corruption and divination in Trinidad and Tobago. And it will seem like overnight there will be a shift. Because he's taking down the kingpins in this nation. They will come toppling down. Because the church of Jesus Christ is rising up. The word says here, the prophetic word that is, like Haman, the plans of those who run their foot, run swiftly to gossip, to do evil, to do bloodshed, and it's tolerated and celebrated in my churches. God says that he is turning those tables around. Because like him and their plans will not prosper, I am overturning their banquet table and their table of blood sacrifice. The church life in life is rising up with authority to bring things into order, remembering her authority. And so we speak, we speak to the strongholds of religion, legalism, lukewarmness, witchcraft. Resistance to the new thing that God is doing, to pride, to limiting God, to quenching the Holy Spirit, to denying the gifts of the Spirit, to declaring that miracles are not for, di for today. All these things, God is breaking those strongholds and exposing those lies in Jesus' name. On behalf of the church, I renounce Freemasonry and I reject it at every level in Jesus' name. Where there are saints, it is in their lineage. I reject it and I say to some of you, get desperate and ask for help to start to renounce it because it's in your lineage. I reject and renounce undermining, distraction, time wasting. And I reinforce the purpose that God has declared before the foundations of the earth for you, for your families and for this church. I renounce the abuse of the mercy gift and the disrespect of authority. I renounce helplessness, codependency, fear of sickness, and suffering in Jesus' name. Jezebel's witches, warlocks, will not be able to enter or stay in here unless they've come to repent for seeking to destroy God's church. We disallow astral projection in our church and in our homes. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about? Find out. Just send me a message. Very simple. You have to know how to disallow these things in your homes. We dismantle all satanic and Jezebelic agendas from the past leading up to today. We will not tolerate Jezebel in our midst. We will not allow her daughters to remain in our midst. We reject and renounce that because the fact is we are rejecting religion because some of us feel because we do something one way, we have to do it the same way the next day, God is changing everything up. You will do something one day, unless it's the word of God we're talking about. You will have a group one day, and the group will change the next day. According to the sovereign will of God and the spirit of God in the church. I want to declare as we close, we leave ourselves open to the fresh move of the Holy Spirit every minute, every hour, every day. We declare that God has called us as his servants and this church will be run through the fivefold ministry and we will recognize the offices of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher and evangelist. We will respect authority and we will not quench the gifts that God has poured out and wants to use in his church for his honor and his glory. 
those of you who are listening to this message right now, you can say this over, over your homes, over your businesses, because it is a global message. Just change the wording a little bit and personalize it for yourself. We welcome God's plan to equip us all through those who are already equipped. We will become equipped to equip others. We welcome God sending many from the east, the west, the north, and the south to this church to answer his call. We look out for them and we await them with anticipation. We welcome God sending those from within our midst to plant churches in the east, west, north, and south. We welcome life in life for being a voice for the nations as we continue to upload God's messages and minister the word. We welcome the change that comes with a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. We reject any ways that our worship was not in spirit and in truth in the past, over the last nine years. We repent for putting down the banners, waiting for someone to train us when the Holy Spirit was always there to train us. As the anointing said, he will teach us and we thank the Holy Spirit, that our worship with banners will increase. The anointing will increase and be more pleasing unto God. And those of you know, we've just picked up the banners. And on a Sunday, we use them. And I don't want nobody to bring no textbook to show me how to use the banners. The people will worship with the banners and the Holy Spirit will show them how to use the banners. We thank God for the anointing for breakthrough that will transcend the church, will transcend your families, will transcend your businesses. And through the marketplace ministries, you will affect the darkness around. And so, Lord, as I close today, I ask you to release that same anointing to go out to serve, to love, to operate in your gifts and supernaturally minister one to another as the early church, the church that God planted and operated. Father, I will say it again. We said it on Sunday. I release the anointing received upon ourselves, upon you, upon this church. There shall be a great anointing for deliverance and inner healing and the gifts of the Spirit. It will be poured out upon each of you. And by extension, the light of Christ in you will ignite a fire in your families. Many who thought it was impossible to be healed and set free will be restored. And we ask that tongues of fire would rest upon each of you who desires an outpouring of more of his spirit. We declare that the children and the youth of this church will pray one for another and will reap the fruit in the book of Joel. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And I want you to understand right now that there are those young ones that are messaging about dreams that they're having. And we are also seeing, you might not think it's significant, but the spirit of God will continue to be poured out. Nothing is going to block what God wants to do. So I want to encourage you today. Don't settle for no bondage in your life. If you need help with it, ask for help. But God has made a way. And what you read about Paul and Peter in the book of Acts, God is calling us to follow him and the gifts of the spirit and the fruit, the fruit character come forth. All we don't have time to waste, you understand? We have no time to waste. So Father, I thank you that even though everything wasn't taught, there was quite a bit taught today. And Father, sometimes we have to learn and understand to then turn and worship you with all our heart and soul. Father, give us the big picture. Continue to give us the big picture. Help us very simply to know you have a plan and you are not going to let the enemy hinder us or keep us back any more in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, take us back to our first love as we heard in that message and remind us that when we think about you, oh, you are awesome. You are glorious, but you are holy. Make us holy as you are holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.